Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. PAX West is this weekend and Wizards of the Coast has gone all out. In addition to hosting the World Championship, Wizards is throwing more Kaladesh at us than we can handle, to be honest. So with that in mind, I declare Kaladesh spoiler season started. This is going to be a wild ride, oh baby. If you enjoy our spoiler coverage and you're as excited as I am for this set, be sure to hit the like button. Helps out a lot. Sky Sovereign Console Flagship is 5 mana for a 6-5 legendary artifact vehicle with flying. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. It also has Crew 3. Tap any number of creatures you control with total power 3 or more. This vehicle becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. New mechanic alert! Okay, so we've got vehicles. Here's how they work. It enters the battlefield as a non-creature artifact. For it to become a creature, you need to crew the ship. Makes sense. So you can tap three Eldrazi Scions, three Thopters, just your Lamehole Pacifist, any amount of creatures that get you to three total power. Once you do that, it's a creature until end of turn. And with a new border to boot, this card looks so cool. Remind anyone else of the Skyship from Final Fantasy X? Just me? Okay. Anyways, the flagship is actually quite strong. Lupine Prototype can crew it just by itself. It's a dangerous prospect, but it's true. Some things you should keep in mind. Sky Sovereign does not start out as a creature, which means it cannot be your commander. I know, I cry tears of unhappiness. Second, there's a reason this has to have crew to activate. A 5 mana with no color requirements, 6-5 with flying, and bolt to a creature or planeswalker on entry to the battlefield or attack is stupidly powerful, like outrageously powerful. I wouldn't be surprised to see this card in standard at some point. Not too difficult to get 3 power you don't want to attack with. Let's look at another vehicle. Fleet Wheel Cruiser is 4 mana for a 5-3 artifact vehicle with trample and haste and crew too. When it enters the battlefield it becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. Alright, this is a vehicle I can get behind. Super aggressive, basically is a 4 mana 5-3 with trample and haste for a turn that's pretty brutal. I won't lie, I'm a fan of the Batmobile. It isn't game breaking as after the first turn you do need to crew it, but this provides some serious board pressure and immediate damage. We actually just have cars now. I approve. Oval Chase Dragster is 4 mana for a 6 1 vehicle with trample, haste, and crew 1. Alright, so we just made a more expensive ball lightning, but in the form of a pod for pod racing. You know what? I'll take it. I will. This is great. 4 mana for a 6 one with trample and haste and all you have to do is tap a creature with 1 power seems okay to me. And at worst it'll beat your opponent in the face for 6, or take something down with it while probably dealing some damage. Ball lightning had value. This does too. Vehicles are so funny. Tassel Dromedary is 1 white mana for a 0-4 camel. Really? A camel, really? I haven't even gotten over this yet and you want to print more camels? I hate the set now. It's totally ruined. Unbelievable. Aether Tradewinds is getting a standard reprint for the first time ever. I usually don't mention common reprints, but this one has particularly specific value. It can return any permanent, including lands. Not something that Wizards puts in standard all that often anymore. We're all expecting Ornithopter to come back, right? Imagine the trade wins and that card. Three mana, set your opponent back a turn. Seems decent to me. The trade wins is certainly a valuable card. We don't know a whole lot yet, but Vidalkin are definitely on Kaladesh. Curio Vendor is 2 mana for a 2-1 Vidalkin. I don't much care about the card itself, but I thought it was important to show you one of the races on Kaladesh. Especially since we're going to be seeing a lot of them, and Vidalkin have been in Magic for a long time. Can't wait to see how Wizards fleshes this creature type out. Gaunti Lord of Luxury is 2 of anything and 2 black for a 2-3 legendary creature Aetherborn Rogue with Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down, then put the rest on the bottom of that library in a random order. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may look at it, you may cast it, and you may spend mana as though were mana of any type to cast it. Wow, text box. First off, Aetherborn is a new creature type, non-binary, which means it doesn't have a gender, and it's completely comprised of Aether. That's friggin' sweet. Cool name. 4 mana for a 2-3 with death touch is alright, being able to cast something from an opponent's exile is also powerful, and being able to cast that card with mana of any type, yes please, giving you that card advantage on a silver platter. Best part about this card, you can blink it and the card you exiled stays exiled. Gonti doesn't have to be on the battlefield. 
So blank it, completely wreck your opponent's deck, take all their good stuff, win-win. I love this card. Dipala Pilot Exemplar is one of anything, one red and one white for a 3-3 legendary creature dwarf pilot. Other dwarves you control get plus one plus one. Each vehicle you control gets plus one plus one as long as it's a creature. Whenever Dipala becomes tapped, you may pay X. If you do, reveal the top X cards of your library, put all dwarf and vehicle cards from among them into your hand, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, dwarf tribal? Yes, dwarf tribal. I've been waiting for this moment ever since friggin' Balthor the Stout was released. Dapala is awesome. Dwarf Lord, check. Vehicle Lord, check. And card advantage on a stick? Oh, it's so strong. And she's in Boros, which is a breath of fresh air. Nice to see a bit more complexity out of a commander in those colors. Get your Dwarven recruiters now. Just fair warning. Rashmi Eternity's Crafter is two of anything, one green and one blue for a 2-3 legendary creature elf druid. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card with converted mana cost less than that spells, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If you don't cast the revealed card, put it into your hand. I- what? Rashmi is ridiculous. Are you serious? Okay, let's review. Four mana, two, three, whatever. I don't care. So you cast your first spell for the turn, then you basically pseudo-cascade. You reveal the top card, hope that it's a non-land card with a lower mana cost than what you just played so you can cast it for free, and even if it's not, even if it's stupidly expensive, you put it into your hand. What? This card is stupid. It doesn't even say each of your turns. It says each turn. You get to trigger this on your opponent's turns. What is even happening right now? Rashmi is outrageous. Card advantage machine for days. I don't even know how to feel. Not done with Rashmi yet. Do you even understand the synergy with Sensei's Divining Top in Commander? Do you? What about, I don't know, Momir Vig? Everything triggers at the same time and you stack them. That's so much card advantage. Use his first ability, put something on top, get it with your Rashmi Cascade. Is this even fair? No. No, it's not. Rashmi is ridiculous. Just wow. Sahili Rai is one of anything, one blue and one red for a three loyalty planeswalker. You can plus one and scry one. Sahili deals one damage to each opponent. You can minus two and create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. The token gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. You can also minus seven and search your library for up to three artifact cards with different names, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. At a glance, Sahili seems awesome. Three mana are great. Three loyalty to start just fine. Her ability is relevant but complex. Her plus one is nice because Scry is valuable and you can redirect that one damage to opposing planeswalkers to stop them from messing with you. Her minus two has serious value, especially in a format like Modern where you can copy Restoration Angel or Snapcaster Mage. As we're talking constructed for the moment, there is an issue with Sahili. She doesn't protect herself very well. Even when you create a token of something, it leaves at the end step, so your shields are down if you didn't already have shields up the previous turn. Obviously never underestimate a 3-mana Planeswalker, and this is definitely no Liliana of the Veil, vale, and it is good. I'm just wondering if it's impactful enough in a constructed environment. Just some thoughts. As far as commander playability though, oh man, this is finally a Planeswalker that literally wins when her ultimate goes off. Seriously, in Commander, there are countless infinite combos that you can grab with the ability to search for three artifacts. I should make a video just talking about all the stupid infinite combos you can get with Sahili. Yeah, that sounds fun. Inventor's Fair is a legendary land card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, you gain one life. You can tap it to add one colorless mana to your mana pool. You can also pay for, tap it, and sacrifice it to search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Activate this ability only if you control three or more artifacts. Okay, it can't be just me. This is Metalcraft, right? Like, they printed a card with Metalcraft, but then just didn't put the word Metalcraft on it. That's weird. Beyond that, the card's interesting. Gaining life for controlling artifacts is nice, especially when it's a passive effect, but getting to tutor for an artifact is super cool. If we can get some decently powerful artifacts in standard, I don't see how this won't be powerful. Or you could just pair this with something like Tireless Tracker since clues are artifacts. Hilarious passive synergy, because the tracker needed more value. Beyond standard, Doretti needed more tutoring in Commander, and this is perfect for him. Voltron Equipment Commander strategies are super happy. It's a good card. 
One other thing you should know, you see the bottom of the card, it says Story Spotlight and shows the website for Magic's lore. This is to note that this card is particularly important in Magic's telling of Kaladesh's story. You can also tell by the Planeswalker watermark in the text box. It's pretty interesting. I'm actually glad that they're pointing out the important lore events and places for us. Helps a lot of players who maybe aren't caught up on the story. It's pretty cool. This is just the first of many Kaladesh videos that are going to come out both this weekend and throughout all of Kaladesh preview season. We've already seen so many cards, and there will be other videos about the cards we've seen so far. I legit couldn't fit everything into one video, so look out for more. There will be so many. Anyways, let me know what you're thinking. How do you feel about everything released so far? How do you feel about the new legendary creatures? How about Sahili? Are any of these cards going into your commander decks? Any build around cards for standard? Please talk to me. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Kaladesh spoiler information you can ever need. This is the Man of Swords, I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. If Kaladesh is already a set you're looking to get your hands on, you can pre-order boxes right now for around $100. If you don't have cheaper options in your area, this is a great place to get your booster boxes pre-ordered. If you're still like me and you're caught up with conspiracy, boxes of that are readily available for $93. What I'm saying is if you're looking for boxes of sets, the site has your back. Click the links if you want anything and enjoy. More spoiler hype to come.